Hey, this is Matt, and in this video, we're going to go over financial astrology and why it's something that's worth taking into account. So today, the world financial markets are just so complex, and we typically try to use things such as fundamental analysis or technical analysis, or even the two combined together to try to make sense of what's going on in the market today, as well as what could happen tomorrow. However, if we're honest with ourselves, we'll realize that there's far more to the markets than just technical and fundamental analysis. There could be different cycles going on. There could be a wide variety of different factors that affect the market. So as we're trying to take those factors into account, including you know, different cycles and lots of different factors, we might want to take into account financial astrology as well. And I'll get in a moment to financial astrology as far as some additional color on that. But first, let's think about the way that humans make decisions, including the decisions to buy or sell stocks. So if we really take a step back and look at the way that we really behave, you know, a lot of times we make decisions based on emotion rather than logic. And that typically goes against what you would expect. We, including myself, I like to think of myself as a logical person. I like to think that I look at the facts and I make decisions based on them. However, when it comes down to it, a lot of times we make decisions in the heat of the moment based on emotion. And then later on, after the fact, we try to justify that with logic. And it's easy to be a logical person when the stock market is you know, moving right along and it's very stable. However, when there's panic in the markets, a lot of times it's more difficult for investors to, to maintain that, that balance. So when it comes down to making those decisions, there are factors out there that could affect humans' emotions, which therefore could affect the decisions that they make to buy or sell stocks. So let's talk about this white paper that the Federal Reserve came up with. So the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, they released this white paper that talked about how geomagnetic storms could impact world stock markets. So their conclusion was that stock returns appear to be negatively affected by geomagnetic storms during their recovery phase. So the Federal Reserve also found that the effect was statistically and economically significant, as well as how it seems to generate some trading gains. So the Federal Reserve is a very respected body. So when their white papers come out and they say that these types of factors could influence the market, it's probably influencing it through human emotion. So let's say that there's some type of factor out there, such as a geomagnetic storm, that could basically, uh, through some way, shape, or form, affect the way that humans feel, you know, affect the human emotion, and therefore affect the way that the trading happens. So one theory that I've heard described as far as how this could affect the markets is that the different movements of the planets could affect the way that the sun has its solar output. So different planetary movements could affect the solar output as far as increasing it or decreasing it or causing anomalies in one way, shape, or form, in one way, in one form or another. And when those anomalies take place, that could result in electromagnetic particles or something else going from the sun to the earth. And the way those changes take place, that could affect human emotion. And that could be the factor behind the Federal Reserve's white paper as far as how geomagnetic storms could affect you know, the stock market. It's probably not directly affecting the stock market, but it's probably affecting the humans that are making those buy and sell decisions is what could be affecting the market. So a lot of times what happens is a market anomaly will be identified and then professors in a wide variety of universities will write lots of white papers about it and then it becomes very well known, very popular, and as a result, that incremental gain goes away. So be, for example, a good example is the January effect. For a while, stock returns were higher in the month of January uh, as compared to the typical month out of the year. Some of that had to do with taxes and different factors. But the point is that once enough professors came out with white papers and once enough uh, stock traders found out about that January effect, the effect basically went away. And that's something that to a large extent you can't really trade and make money on. And when it comes to financial astrology, it's one of those things that has not necessarily gone to such a wide level of adoption. So even though astrology itself has been around for literally thousands of years, financial astrology, I would still describe it as being in its relative infancy. And there's a great opportunity here to try to figure out what some of those factors are that are influencing the financial markets beyond just you know technical and fundamental analysis to try to get to those other harder to understand factors. It's easy to understand how a company's increase in its net income could affect its stock price, but it's a lot harder to understand how the psychological impact behind everything could be affecting the market. So I'm going to pause here and talk about who this content is for and who it is not for. So if you are looking to get rich quick, if you are looking to look for a perfect trading system, uh, if you are 
not really willing to consider the possibility that there could be something to financial astrology, then I would say that this content really is not for you. So if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. We can part as friends. Um, you know, feel free to just uh, you know stop this video. You can close your browser or go to a different web page and you know go on your merry way. No hard feelings. Um, but I would say that if if that describes you, then this content probably is not for you. So here's who this content really is for. Instead, this content is intended for people who are open-minded and who are receptive to the possibility that there could be things that we don't yet fully comprehend that could be influencing investors' emotions and therefore their behaviors, including buying and selling stocks. So if that's the case, if you do find yourself to be the type of person who is receptive to trying to figure out what are the other factors that could be influencing the stock market beyond fundamental and technical analysis, then this video and this content is definitely for you, and please keep watching. So before the concept of gravity was understood, sailors found out a long time before that that there was a correlation between the moon's movements and the high and low tides. And just because the sailors did not necessarily know why the moon was connected to the high and low tides, that didn't, help, that didn't stop the sailors from being able to take advantage of that knowledge. The sailors were still able to realize, hey, you know what? When the, move, when the moon is in a certain place, we have a high tide. And when it's in a different place, we have the low tide. So the sailors, they started to take advantage of that information and they were able to benefit from it, even though they didn't necessarily know about the concept of gravity. And I would say similarly, at this point, we may not necessarily fully comprehend how the astrological phenomena could influence human behavior and emotions, but I would say that we should not let this stop us from exploring this possibility. Because for a long time, everybody, quote unquote, knew that the world was flat. Everybody thought that if you kept sailing, you would basically just fall off of a cliff. And around the time of Christopher Columbus, that was a pretty popular sentiment, that the world was flat. However, thankfully, not everybody ascribe, you know, subscribed to that line of thinking. And people started to realize, hey, you know what? There could be other possibilities out there. Maybe the world's not flat. Maybe the world is round. So as we're trying to figure out what are those other factors that are influencing the financial markets as far as the changes in stock prices and the prices of commodities, you know, foreign currencies, things like that, financial astrology is definitely something that I think is worthy of further research to try to figure out if it does have any impact on those decisions of investors to buy and sell securities and if it could have a resulting effect on the overall market prices. So to provide a brief background on the thought process behind financial astrology, so we're going to talk about what goes into it. So it's a rather comprehensive field. It covers a lot of different areas. Uh, so we're not going to cover everything, but this is going to just cover the basics. So this idea about some planetary aspects being positive or negative, this goes back literally thousands of years. Uh, so the idea is that certain planetary aspects could be positive, whereas others could be negative. Uh, so for example, an aspect of 60 degrees between two planets, that's thought to be a positive aspect. That's called a sextile aspect. Whereas a trine aspect of 120 degrees, so this would be 120, or 240 degrees, a trine aspect, that's thought also to be positive. However, other aspects are thought to be negative. These are called the hard aspects or the negative aspects. So a 180 degree aspect between two planets, or a 90 degree aspect between two planets, that's considered to be a negative aspect as well. So for a long time, people would take into account you know, these different planetary aspects. However, it wasn't really until Donald Bradley's book called uh, Stock Market Prediction that you had a tool that took into account all these different factors. So for example, let's say that you have a good planetary aspect that's taking place. However, at the same time, you have four negative planetary aspects. The four negative ones might outweigh the one single positive one. So as a result, uh, they kind of cancel each other out to some extent. So in this book called Stock Market Prediction, so this is the cover for the book, Donald Bradley came out with this book in the 1940s, and it basically took into account the different planetary aspects that were taking place at a certain point in time, both the positive ones and the negative ones. And it was trying to see what is the net overall impact? Is it overall negative or is it overall positive? And by doing that, you can get a better sense for not just how one aspect is performing, but how multiple aspects are performing. And by using that methodology, you wouldn't just be considering one aspect in isolation, but you would be considering effectively all of the major aspects. Uh, Donald Bradley also included declinations uh, in his methodology as well. So that's the, the actual mechanics behind the thought process. And the mechanics are intended to take into account all of the different aspects as compared to just looking at one aspect by itself. Uh, so here we see a graph of the Bradley-Sedera graph. 
So this is the metric that Donald Bradley came up with. And this green line right here, this green line is the Bradley Sedair graph. And it basically goes up if in the aggregate you have more positive aspects taking place. And overall it goes down if you have more negative aspects taking place. And the idea is that the more negative aspects that you have taking place, the more likely it is that you could possibly have negative investor sentiment. Whereas if you have an increase in the Bradley Sedair graph, if it goes up, you could have better investor sentiment as a result of more positive aspects taking place. So these graphs on the website, they basically graph the price of a security against this indicator, which is intended to be able to cover market sentiment as far as are investors more bullish or are they more bearish? This was the methodology that Donald Bradley came up with, but one improvement that I came up with was a way to try to identify the turn dates. So for the Bradley Sedera graph, a key thing to do is to try to determine when the indicator changes. So if you see here on June 21st, 2017, this is where you have a high point in the indicator for the year. After that, it goes down. So previously, people would be judgmental as far as their determination of what was a turn date. So I think it's pretty clear that the turn date here is a clear turn date. However, when you come over here to late February, you can see that there's a slight turn in the Sedera graph, but it's so small that it's not really worth taking into account. So I developed a mathematical formula to try to identify what were the bigger turns as compared to the small turns that really were not worth taking into account. Also, to provide a little bit more color on the Bradley Sedera graph, so here you see uh, some of the three elements that combine to create the Bradley Sedera graph. So that green graph that we saw up here, this right here is the Bradley Sedera graph. And the way that you get this is you add up three separate items. One item is the long terms. Think of this as simply the aspects between the further out planets. So aspects between Jupiter and Saturn, you know, Uranus, Neptune. So that would be the long terms. The middle terms, this refers to aspects between the closer in planets, such as Mercury, uh, Venus, Mars, uh, planets like that. And this right here is the declinations. So the declination refers to how high north or south of the Earth's equator are the planets. These different metrics are added all together uh, to be able to come up with the bradley sedera graph. And this graph right here graphs everything, but it's a little bit easier to see if you look at these graphs that are further up here above. So when it comes to the bradley sedera graph, if we want to be able to map how this particular indicator is working compared to a particular security, we might want to be able to make that comparison. And it's a little bit hard to do if we look at two graphs, one graph of the stock and then one graph of the indicator. So I thought it would be easier to actually be able to look at a graph of the indicator against the graph of the stock price or the commodity price or the uh, foreign exchange currency pair, uh, whatever the currency or security would be. Here we have the Bradley Bars dashboard 2.0. So this dashboard enables us to compare the indicator, the Bradley Sedera graph, to whichever security we like. So you'll see here, this is the green indicator for the Bradley Sedera graph. And right now it's graphed against the S&P 500. So you can see that it's performed relatively well recently. Um, it's not perfect. So for example, the low in the Bradley Sedera graph took place around January the 5th of 2016 whereas the low in the S&P 500 didn't take place until about a month later. Uh, but you can see that the lows for the Bradley Sedera graph uh, have recently been associated with lows in the S&P 500. And this high in the S&P 500 right here wasn't too far away from the top in the Bradley Sedera graph. It's interesting to note that you know, the high here for the S&P 500 has come down you know, from here to here. It looks like the uptrend has already started. So even though the Bradley Sedera graph uh, looks like it bottoms around the end of November, um, it looks like the S&P 500 may have spiked up a little bit before that. So you can see that it's not necessarily to the exact day, um, but it's interesting how the correlations uh, go from the indicator and the S&P 500 both decreasing right here, and then both increasing, and then decreasing, increasing again, and then decreasing, and then once again increasing. Um, so that's interesting, but just to be clear, uh, past performance is no guarantee of future results. And because I'm not familiar with the details of your own personal financial situation, I'm not able to offer any type of financial, legal, or other types of advice. So definitely please consult your own uh, financial advisors and other professional advisors as you make your own uh, decisions. So let's talk about how we can use this dashboard. So we're going to go under where it says Bradley Sedera graph, and we're going to change the no to a yes. So after we did that, you'll notice that there are some bars that show up. 
So these are the Bradley bars. This is what we talked about earlier, where we talked about the identification of the exact turn dates. So this helps us identify when the exact turn date took place. And if you want to find out what the exact date is, I recommend that you come over here to where it says highlight. So it says highlight, yes. You can just change that to no. So what the highlight does is it basically shows us the year. So this right here is on uh, the year 2016. So it simply shows us the beginning of the year, which is January 1st, 2016, all the way through the end of the year, you know, December 31st, 2016. But it also shows us the one quarter before that year. So this would be uh, 4Q 2015, as well as the first quarter of the next year. So 1Q 17. So if you don't want to see that yellow highlighting to make it clear what the year is, you can just change the yes to a no. And after you do that, you'll see that the yellow lines will basically disappear. So because those are gone, now we can put the mouse cursor on top of one of those bars and it will tell us what the date is. So you can see here the date is July the 5th of 2016. Oh, exactly, July the 5th of 2016. So if you want to see what date this is, you can put your cursor over it and you can see it says November 29th, 2016. And then this date would be December 29th, 2016. And you'll see the value. So it also says at the bottom value 19. So that means that it's 19 out of 100. So you can see that the bigger turn dates have a larger value, whereas the smaller turn dates have a smaller value. And if you look at the literature on the Bradley Sedera graph, a lot of times people will talk about how a bigger turn date will not necessarily result in a bigger turn in the stock or the commodity or index, whatever it is that you're looking at. So as we analyze the turn dates, the focus isn't quite so much on trying to look at the biggest turn dates and try to assume that these are going to be the biggest, but it's more to identify which turn dates are worth looking at, such as this turn date here, versus which turn dates, uh, such as this one right here, are so small that it's not really a turn date and it's not really worth looking into. So, so far we've looked at the Bradley Sedera graph, but let's say that we wanted to look at the three items that combine to create the Bradley Sedera graph. So just to recap, if you add up the middle terms, planetary aspects, the, the long terms, planetary aspects, and the declinations, if you add all three of these together, that's how you get the bradley sedera graph. So if you wanted to hide the bradley sedera graph, you can simply change these to a no so that you do not see them. And then one thing you can also do is, uh, let's say you want to look at the long terms. You can change that to a yes. So when you do that, you can see that you have the Bradley bars for the long terms. And then if you want to see the line graph, you can come over here and say yes to the line graph for the long terms. Okay, so you can see here that there is a top in the long terms around the end of January. So if we want to see the exact date, once again, we can put our cursor over it and you can see it was February the 2nd. Um, so it's interesting that, that that corresponded approximately to the same time that we saw the, the low in the S&P 500 for the year. Uh, you can see that you had a top, uh, once again here, where you had the pretty much the top of the S&P 500, not exact, but relatively close. Um, so it's interesting uh, to note things like that. And if you want to see the power of the turn dates, you can just come down here once again and put your cursor over it, and you can see, for example, that this has a uh, power of 35 out of 100. So here's a cool new feature for the Bradley Bars Dashboard 2.0 that's brand new that has not been released before in any previous version. So the Bradley Sedera graph is sometimes thought to have inversions. And if you notice here, you have a high in the long terms and you have a low in the security. So let's say that you wanted to flip the graph. Let's say that you wanted to, let's say right here, because you see an increase in the long terms and you see a decrease in the price in the S&P 500, let's say that you want the long terms to flip upside down starting here. So what we can do is we can decide where we want to flip it. So if you point the mouse cursor here, you can see that that date, that date is approximately in November 30th, 2015. So over here where it says inversion date, we can type that in. So we're going to type in 11, 30, 2015. Okay, so now that we have that there, we can come over here to where it says inverse. And for long terms, we're going to change it from standard we're going to change that to say inverse. So you'll notice there's a little drop down box to the right side of this cell right here. So we're going to click on that drop down box and change it to inverse. After we do that, you'll see that the graph will flip upside down. So you'll see that the graph after that point in time, it flipped upside down. And now you see that the low in the 
long terms corresponded to the low in the S&P 500. And the reason why you notice the scaling difference is because depending upon which date you select, that could put the indicator above the top of the graph. And we wouldn't want that. We want to be able to see the whole indicator. So the graph automatically scales itself so that you'll be able to see the entire indicator uh, regardless of which date you choose for the, uh, for the inversion date. So I'm very excited about this new feature. And for example, you can see here at the uh, beginning of the fourth quarter of 2015, you can see that the S&P 500 increased at the same time the long terms were increasing. They were approximately flat for a while, then they both decreased, and then they both increased. So I'm very excited about this new inversion functionality. Let's talk about something else. Let's say that we wanted to look at a different year. So we can come over here and instead of saying January 1st, 2016, we can say we want to see January 1st, 2015. So we'll type in 1, 1, 2015. Okay, after we do that, you'll see that the graph will change. So it's going to go to that point in time. And you'll see here, for example, it says uh, January, 5, January 15, which is January 2015, as compared to January 2016. And you can see the long terms as compared to the S&P 500. The graph looks relatively good, but if you want to scale it a little bit more, after you change the year, you can come over here and you can click on scale the graph and the graph will get scaled. Um, so this is a, a great way to be able to have your security show up so it's a little bit easier to see. So if you ever change the year and all of a sudden you can't see the security on the graph, just come over here and click on scale the graph so that you can be able to see it graphed for you. So let's also cover the rate of change. If you come over here to the long terms where it says rate of change, if you change the no to a yes, so in the drop down box, we're just going to change the no to a yes, you'll see that a line graph shows up. And this line graph will basically be an indication of the rate of change. So for example, if you look at the long terms over here, uh, let's say over the period of time between um, March through April of 2015, you can see that it's relatively flat. You can see there's relatively little change in the long terms. However, if you come over here and you look at the time period from July 2015 through the end of August 2015, you can see there's a pretty dramatic drop in the long terms. So during that time period, there's a pretty significant change in the long terms. And the change that it looks at is the absolute change. So it looks at whether it's going up fast or if it's going down pretty fast. Uh, so you can see that it's going down pretty fast. So the rate of change is relatively high. This indicator was mentioned by Donald Bradley in his book, Stock Market Prediction. Uh, keep in mind, he did the book in the 1940s and he did not have the access to Microsoft Excel and powerful computers that we have today. Uh, so he only talked about the possibility of creating this as compared to actually creating it himself. Um, but we have the ability to take advantage of this today because of our modern technology. And it's interesting to note that the, the spike, the highest point in the, the rate of change of the long terms for the year, uh, that corresponded to the point in time right before the S&P 500 dropped pretty significantly in late August of 2015. So that's the rate of change indicator that we can use. However, let's say that we wanted to look at a longer term perspective. How could we do that? So historically for the Bradley Bars dashboard, we were able to look at one year plus one quarter before and after. So for example, for this graph here, we can see the year 2015 as well as uh, 4Q 2014 and 1Q 2016. So in addition to that, the Bradley Bars dashboard also gives you some other options. So if we scroll down here, you can actually see what the long terms looks like over a long term perspective as compared to the S&P 500. You can also come down here and you can see the 10 years. So in addition to the one year, you can also look at the five year perspective as well as the 10 year perspective. And this can really help you get a, a much better longer term view of what's going to happen to the long terms as well as um, what's happened historically for the particular indicator that you're looking at and the security price. So right now, by default, the Bradley Bars Dashboard 2.0 has the data for the S&P 500. And you'll see over here towards the right of the graph, you'll see that it says date and adjusted close price. So this is where we have the dates and the prices for the security that we're looking at. If we want to clear that out, we can simply come over here and we can click this button that says clear historical data. So let's go pull in data for a different security. So how do we get that data? We can get it in a wide variety of sources. 
and there's a tab in the Bradley Bars dashboard 2.0 that's intended to help you identify that data. So let's go to this tab that's labeled security price data. So here you can see a list of securities as well as some Quandle codes, as well as some other data sources. So the other data sources, this is where you can download the data, for example, from Yahoo Finance. And this section over here for Quandle data codes, this is simply the code that you would use to download the data through this Microsoft Excel add-in called Quandle. Quandle can really make it very quick and easy for you to download the historical data directly into Microsoft Excel. And we'll go over a quick example of that soon. Quandle is great. Uh, other data sources can be great. It's really your personal preference. Uh, you can use whichever data source that you like, but I'll just mention that this is simply for your convenience. I can't guarantee that this data will always be available. I really can't guarantee the accuracy of it, but I, I found it personally to be very useful. I really hope that it's useful for you as well. So let's talk about uh, how to download this data. Let's first go over an example of how to pull in data from Yahoo Finance. So if we come down here, let's pick a company Let's go with Microsoft. Down here, there is a Yahoo Finance website address. So we're going to copy that, and then we're going to look that up on Yahoo Finance. Okay, so we're now here at Yahoo Finance for Microsoft Corporation, and you can see we pasted in that link. And if we come down here, you see that there's historical data. So if we want to adjust the time period, here's typically what we want to do. Where it says time period, we want to click on that and then hit max. Max simply pulls in the maximum amount of data that's available. And then we can hit done. So here's an important step that's important to do. After we change the time period to max, we want to come over here and click apply. So first change the time period to max and then hit apply. After we do that, it's going to refresh and now we can download the data. So let's come over here and click on download data. And you'll see that it downloaded a file for us. Once we open up that file that we just downloaded, uh, we can see what it looks like. So the only two fields that we really need are the date field and the adjusted close price field. So let's get rid of the ones that we don't want. So let, let's click on column B and let's drag over to column F. So click on B and drag over to column F, right click and hit delete. So now we have exactly what we need. So here's a shortcut that will be very, very useful to you. I highly recommend that you make a note of this. Okay, so here's what the shortcut is. So we want to click on this date right here. So the date on the top left, it says December 1st, 2016. And then we're going to hold down two keys. We're going to hold down the shift key as well as the control key. And then finally, while we're holding down those keys, so this entire time we're holding down shift and control. So we're holding down shift and control. We're going to hit the right key, the right arrow key, and then the down arrow key. So once again, all we did was we clicked on this top left date and then we held down shift and control. And while we're holding down shift and control, we're hitting the arrow right, and we're still holding down control and shift, and then hitting the arrow down. So once we do that, control shift right down, you'll see that it basically copied the entire section. So once we have that, we can use the shortcut control C to copy, or you can right click and choose copy, whichever you prefer. And once you have that copied, we can bring this into the dashboard. So let's come over here to the dashboard and let's paste it in. So you can do control V to paste it, or you can right click and you can choose paste. So after you do that, you'll see that uh, all the data is there for Microsoft. However, as we talked about before, if you change the year, if you change the security, we want to make sure that we scale the graph after we do that. So we're going to come over here to the top left where it says scale the graph, and we're going to click that button. And after we do that, you'll see that it basically rescaled the graph for Microsoft. Now we're going to go over how to import data into the dashboard using Quandle. This is a great tool that I've really found to be helpful. It makes it much quicker to import data into the dashboard. Um, it's really up to you. You can uh, choose if you want to use Quandle or some other methodology. Uh, but here's how you use Quandle. So if you come over to this security price data tab, let's try to download the historical price data for gold. So let's copy this right here. So this is the Quandle code for gold. And then let's just come over to the side. We can create a new worksheet and let's paste that data code. Okay, so once we have that there, let's come over to the Quandle toolbar. And there are separate videos that go over how to uh, download the Quandle add-in and how to install it in Microsoft Excel. So we're not going to go over that detail here. So here you have the Quandle code. 
we're going to, on the Quandle toolbar, we're going to click on the formulas. We'll change that to enable. And then we'll come over here to get data. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, where it says search by database code, we're going to type in what we see to the left of the line. Do you see how it says WGC? We're going to type in WGC. And then we're going to hit next. And then here we want gold underscore daily underscore USD. So we'll click on that. And sure enough, it says uh, gold underscore daily underscore USD. So this is gold in US dollars. So let's click next. And the fields that we care about are date and value. Sometimes you'll see multiple fields here. Uh, typically it's the easiest to just copy the fields that you need. So if it has five or six different fields here, usually you just want the date and the adjusted close price. So we're going to click next and then insert. And sometimes you'll get a message that asks if you are sure that you want to download the data. And uh, typically I'll say yes. Over here where it says formulas, you'll want that to say enable. And then you can hit the refresh data button to be able to refresh the data. So if you come in here you know, tomorrow, you can hit refresh data. And keep in mind, some of these data sets are updated once a day. Uh, sometimes it's a different frequency. Uh, so it kind of varies based upon that particular security. So if we want to copy this data, we can use that trick that we learned earlier which is to hold down control and shift. And then while we're holding that, down those keys, click the right arrow and the down arrow, and then do control C to copy or right click copy. And then we'll come over here and we can paste this into this section here. So after we do that, uh, once again, we'll want to come over to the section that says scale the graph so that we can be able to better see the historical price for gold. And if it's taking a little while for it to load, usually it's pretty quick, it doesn't take very long, but depending upon the speed of your processor, down here at the bottom right, it might say uh, processing, um, and that's just the uh, normal Excel calculations. So once you see the uh, spinning thing stop, you can come over here and click on scale the graph, and you'll see the price of gold as compared to the indicator that you're looking at. So this is gold against the bradley Sedera graph for the year 2016. And then once again, to recap, uh, the new Bradley Bars dashboard 2.0 has two sections at the bottom, uh, one for a longer term five year perspective, as well as a even longer term 10 year perspective. So you can see how the security has performed relative to each of the indicators over a shorter or longer period of time. Well, congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. So now you should have a better understanding of financial astrology. You have a better understanding of the Bradley Sedera graph, including what goes into it. And you have a better understanding of the Bradley Bars dashboard, including all of the additional functionality. I really hope that this is useful for you. And if it seems like it's something that you would love, please add it to your cart and pick up a copy for yourself. There's no risk to you. There's a full 30 day, no questions, money back guarantee. If for whatever reason you're not 110% satisfied, uh, please just reach out to me and I'll process a refund for you. 30 day money back guarantee. There's no questions asked. And even if you just don't like the color scheme that I use for the dashboard, just send me a quick email and I'll very quickly uh, give you a hundred percent full refund. I'm here to help you. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can find my email on the about me page on the website. Well, now you've watched the video, go click on the button to add it to your cart. If this is for you. And if you have any questions, definitely please feel free to reach out to me.